What up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with a new season of Ready to Love, you guys. We are back in Miami, and this is Season 7, Episode 1. The episode is titled 16 Sexer Singles. Oh, you guys, I'm so, I have missed doing Tommy. I really have missed doing Tommy. So before we go ahead and get into the review, you guys, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you guys aren't subscribed to the channel yet, then do me a solid favor, you guys, and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know you can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your post and notifications, you guys. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss Ready to Love, shall we? All right, you guys, so I'm going to first start up with our cast. So I'm going to talk about, you know, I'm going to go down the line of each person and I'm going to put their pictures on the screen beside me. So, you guys, the um, so I'm going to go down the list of the ladies. So the first lady that I'm going to talk about is, her name is Corvea. I forgot how old she is. I'll have it on the screen. But her, the first lady we are introduced to is Corvea. Corvea is a very beautiful girl. I just hate this dress that she's wearing. Natasha. Natasha's a pretty girl. Natasha, if you look at Natasha... And go back to season, I don't forget which season, I forget which, what number season he, the second half of Houston was. But the Houston season when, um, not the resort, because I guys know I didn't watch that one. The one with Jason and Liz, them. If you look at Natasha, Natasha looks a lot like Stacy from um, Ready to Love Houston. Then we have Z. Z is 34 years old. Z looks older than 34 years old. Z's makeup in this episode, I was just like, girl, whoever did this makeup, they did it wrong. The foundation was chalk. Everything was just chalky. Like, and I was just like, girl, it looks bad. She had bad makeup, and so did um, who was the girl that who was the other girl that had bad makeup? Morgan, I believe Morgan. No, 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 Morgan, 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 Morgan. No, it was Marcia who had terrible makeup too. But the next girl we're going to meet is um, Morgan. And then after Morgan, I have Marcia. Only thing about Marcia that was throwing me off was the fact that Marcia's wig, I was just like, it just, it's, it's giving cowardly lion. And then the hair and the, the baby hairs were like back here just a little bit. I was just like, okay. Next up, we met Mercedes. Mercedes, I believe she is 31 years old. And Mercedes is a flight attendant. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Sue Ann. Now, I don't think that they introduced Sue Ann in this episode. I know that everybody was there, but I just don't think they ever really gave Sue Ann any, you know, we really saw Sue Ann talk on camera. So I can't really say much about Sue Ann. Last girl lady is Jeffrey. Jeffrey is pretty, right? But I don't know what this look was she was going for in this interview or in this photo, this cast photo. Because it's given, I have no idea what the fuck is given. So let's end up with the ladies and talk about the men. The first man is Anthony. So Anthony, uh, Anthony. I'm trying to think about who Anthony is. You guys will see him on the screen. Dre. I know who Dre is. Dre to me look like a broke man, Tommy Davidson. Andre. Andre looks like Mr. T's son. I don't know what the fuck this was that Andre did with his hair. He spiraled it and it's just drooping. And I'm just like, no, sir. And the fact that we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Blake. Blake is a handsome guy. He looks like Wes. If you guys watch How to Get Away with Murder, he looks like the guy that played Wes. Demario. Demario's a handsome guy. I don't know how I feel about DeMario, but we'll see as well. Next up is Lyndon. Lyndon looks like Sideshow Bob, you guys, from um, uh, The Simpsons. <laughs> that was the only thing I could think about when I saw it, because the hair, the hair is just all up on his head, and, and it just looked like Sideshow Bob. Then, the next up, we got Blue. Blue says that he's 40 years old. I was like, should we add, you know, maybe 10 more years to that? Because Blue looked like he well into his 50s. And then Tony. Tony gives me big walking red fucking flag. So does Blake. We'll talk about them two in a minute, you guys. But let's pause here and go ahead and get into the episode. <clears throat> so, you guys, the first guy that we were actually introduced to was Andre with this spiral, whatever the 
frick it was in his i'm just like who told him that this was cute then in his interview look he still has his hairstyle with a big ass bow tie i was just like no no so then the first lady we were introduced introduced to was corvea like i said corvea is a very beautiful woman but this dress that she's wearing it just looks like someone's shower curtain that she just threw on and they got shoulder pads it wasn't cute but she's cute um natasha like i said earlier natasha looks a lot like stacy from houston the only thing that i couldn't get past with natasha was her hair it was the big ass it was just this big ass part like girl that part looked like moses part of joe like that looked like a moses part and it was it wasn't it was she's a cute cute girl the one thing I noticed about this episode with Natasha, by the end of the episode, Natasha's hair, she had to slick that shit back into a ponytail. I'm like, God dang, ready to love. Y'all always got these people in the heat. And y'all know they're coming to Dallas next. And I don't know when they're going to start filming for Dallas. But right now, our weather is up and down. One day it's cold. One day it's hot. Today is kind of, today is, it was this morning when I woke up and came outside, it was cool and it was windy now it's getting hot outside so i don't know what they going what they when they're coming here to film but they'll be here soon right the next girl is z like i said a few minutes ago z's makeup was so damn chalky i'm like girl this makeup that you're wearing it has aged you you look you say you're 34 but you look more like you're 54 and no shade to my women that are in their 50s but she looks old so then um we met Dre. So Dre, like I said, Dre looks like a broke man's Tommy Davidson, right? So Dre is very awkward. He is a shorter guy. And they let us know that more t multiple times, right? So Dre is in radio and he does music. I was like, oh, opportunist. Let me know what you guys think, right? So Lyndon, we meet, we are introduced to Lyndon. Lyndon, he works in a night, he's, he's, he works in a nightlife, right? But he wants to, I guess he's saying he wants to get out of that lifestyle. And he's from Kingston, Jamaica. And, yep, it was Morgan. I was correct. So, Morgan. Morgan is a very beautiful girl. I'm, I'm trying to picture Morgan in my head. Oh, Morgan. Morgan is the one with the widow's peak. I was like, who is Morgan? Morgan is the one that had the, had, in, her, in the cast photo, she has the black dress on. But she has the, she has the hair down and it's parted. And she has a widow's peak. That's who Morgan is. Morgan is very, very pretty. Her makeup was too light for her. That makeup, because if you looked up under her, her, it was her eye. It was like up under her eye, up under her eyes and around her eyes. The makeup was just very, very light. And I was like, ugh, who did your makeup, sis? Because they didn't do you right. But okay. So, let's pause here and move forward. All right, you guys, so the next lady that we met was Marcia. So, Marcia is a fashion designer. And Marcia loves herself. And once again, like I said, Marcia's wig was just kind of cowardly lying. But then at the top, it was pushed back a little too far. And I think she had baby hairs, but the baby hairs were on her forehead. Like literally, well, not even on her forehead. Her baby hairs were up here and not right here. And I was just like, okay. Looked like her hair was teased a little bit. But she's she's a she's a cute girl too. She's very all the women, all the women are beautiful. I will say that I'm not. I'm cracking jokes, but all the women I definitely believe are beautiful. So Blue, we met, we met Blue. I think Blue said he owns a hookah lounge and, and some stuff, but I just don't believe that Blue is 40. I think Blue is lying. I do believe that Blue is lying about that age. So Thomas shows up and, you know, talking about the Miami nightlife. And excuse me for saying this, but the Miami, but the Miami dating pool, it has some pee in it. You ain't never lied about that, Tommy, because... We just, I mean, we remember last season of Ready to Love Miami. So, yes, you are correct that the Miami dating pool has some pee in the water. So, I want to introduce y'all to some people that, you know, he, he brought, he did, he did it suspensefully, but Tommy introduced us to Rashid and Simone. Now, you guys know, I don't know who Rashid and Simone are. I didn't watch Ready to Love for Rash, on Rashid and Simone's season. I know, I think I actually, I think... Now you guys can. I think you guys always tell me about Rashid 
and Simone. I know Rashid and Simone have a YouTube channel. Everybody always tells me about Rashid and Simone. But I, you guys know I don't know Rashid and Simone like, that, like you guys do. But Rashid and Simone, they came out. Simone is a very beautiful girl. She's very, very beautiful. And Rashid is a handsome guy. So let me ask y'all this question because Rashina Simone. We'll talk about it in just a minute. Because I had a question about because I don't know Rashida and Simone like that, but I do know that you guys are like I said, you guys always tell me about Rashid and Simone. And I know that somebody somebody told me about Rashid and Simone when I was talking about the success rate for Ready to Love. But we're gonna bring up Rashina Simone in a minute. Um so let's pause here and move forward, you guys. Like I said, we we introduced her Mercedes. So Mercedes, like I said, beautiful, beautiful girl. She's a flight attendant, and you know she's having a conversation with Anthony. Anthony, who the fuck is Anthony? I hate when I can't remember these people's faces. But Anthony is a father. Oh, Anthony, the beard. Anthony is the one with the beard. That I want him to moisturize. Now I know I can't talk about nobody's beard. But I don't keep my beard. Because if I kept my beard. It wouldn't look dry. Like it does right now. Anthony's beard. I wanted him to put something in it. Because that was just dry as hell. Anthony is a father. Now when. um When what is her name again? Mercedes. When she was talking about she's ready. You know she'd be ready to be a stepmom. I'm like oh girl we moving a little too fast. Ain't we? But okay. So we see Rasheed and Simone. So I think they were they were having a conversation. With some of the cast right. And they were just talking about how, their relationship, how they, I think it was Andre who asked who made the first move and Rashid said it was him. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, when Rashid and Simone were, because I know you guys, like I said, you guys have told me a lot about Rashid and Simone, but Rashid and Simone, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Rashid and Simone, so Simone got eliminated, right? And Rashid and Simone didn't get into a relationship with each other until long after the show aired, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that's what it is, right? She got eliminated from the process. How far did Rashid make it in the process? I want you guys to tell me that too. Did he make it to the end with somebody? Did they break up and then he decided to go back to Simone? Like, let me know what the story is between Rashid and Simone because I don't know their story. And I know you guys always say, JB, the earlier seasons were better than what we have now. You guys, I ain't paying for no goddamn uh, Discovery to watch it. So if you guys know another way for me to watch um, the earlier seasons of Ready to Love without having to watch it on Discovery, let you let your boy know. And I'll do that, you guys, and get caught. Because I really only, only season that I don't didn't watch was the two Atlanta seasons and the first Houston season. Those are the only two seasons that I've never watched. The first season was Atlanta, right? You guys are going to correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. But I love you guys. Um, so next up, we have Morgan. So Morgan, she was talking to Tony, right? Now, like I said, I think I said it earlier, Tony just gives me a red, he, he gives me a little pause, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, he, he gives me a little bit of pause. So, you know, they were talking. So Tony is talking about the fact that, you know, um, he has kids, right? And she's talking about how she wants a family. So that sparked his interest in her. Then her interest was sparked in him because he mentioned God. And, you know, she said that, you know, she's a woman of faith and that she tried to date someone who. Now, I got what she was saying. I know exactly what she was saying. It's kind of hard to be in a relationship with someone who probably doesn't have the same ideology in when it comes to faith that you have so you feel like you're dragging in the church you don't have to feel that way the thing is you can be in a relationship with someone who doesn't share the same beliefs that you share that's fine but what the i think what the issue is with some people is when someone who is a devout christian sometimes they they get with people who don't believe or don't go to church like they do and then they want to they want to force they want to force and impose that on another person. And that's not what you should be doing. Like if the person doesn't if the person doesn't want to go to church or believe in the Lord, you let them be, you let them believe in what they believe in. You can't you let them believe in what they believe in. And then you believe in what you believe in. I don't think that faith should be a determining factor in a relationship. 
because that's kind of small that's very small if the person treats you right if the person treats you well you're good because i tweeted this last night about men in the church there are men in the church that are also there are you know just like you talking about this man you know that there are men that are in the church that are completely full of shit right and i think that's what i think that's what tony is no shade to you tony but i just think you're full of shit let's pause here you guys and move forward so next up you guys we have demario and corvea they're having a conversation demario he likes corvea and you know he, she asked him has he been to therapy he said yes i was like oh we hear this every season that they've been to therapy does it help them i don't think so so she also talks about the fact that she doesn't he asked her what is a deal breaker for her right and she says a deal breaker for her is a man that isn't independent and come to find out Lyndon has a roommate now i didn't like the fact that because it, it gave off judgmental when she did that i'm like girl you don't know his story and this man just told you that his landlords sold his apartment so if he didn't have nowhere to stay girl like i hate when people do that don't judge someone's situation when you don't know what their situation is right like this economy has messed up a lot of people's lives so girl don't don't do that jeffrey she looked very greasy i don't know what like she looked really shiny and really greasy now her interview look is an absolute hell no and then the fact that she sat there mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. when she told uh what is his name andre that she liked his hair what he did right here i'm like girl you lying through your mother and teeth blake blake is a very handsome guy and i think blake knows that he's handsome uh i didn't like the fact that the women kept talking about dre's height i didn't like that that man can't help that he's short that man cannot help that he's short i get that people might not want to date somebody that's shorter than them than them you know some women don't want a man that's short some women are fine with it it ain't that big of a deal like people can't just like i say you know, never mind because i don't want to go deep into tangents today um so jeffrey she's a mom of three i think you need to work on yourself a little bit more jeffrey your kids oh where you because she was talking about her kids and how they haven't had a, a a a positive i guess like a positive male figure in their life where are their fathers i'm not trying to, i'm not being funny i'm just asking the question where are their fathers because that's kind of scary this ain't the show for you if you're looking for that for your kids girl never mind mm -mm. i'm gonna pause here and wrap up this episode so blake and natasha you guys blake and natasha were talking at one point and they were talking about children right so blake has three children 122 114 and 19 i was like well damn 22 14 and 9 Ooh okay and mind you there were three different women and that's gonna come I'm, I'm gonna bring that back up in a little bit because when he was talking to natasha he told natasha that he absolutely does not want any more kids and that's that's well within his right to not want to have any more kids right but natasha felt like that was a bit arrogant and i'm like how's that arrogant the man knows what he wants and what he doesn't want at least he ain't lying to you saying he wants kids now i'm gonna bring it up a little bit that he did lie to somebody but it wasn't to her now here's where i have to question you guys simone and rashid i could have swore that you guys told me that simone and rashid were already engaged but by that reaction that simone gave it gave very much faith when she fell down when she started crying and she fell down on the ground i was like oh my god i mean it was cute I feel like Ready to Love did that so that they could have, so that they could show that they do have a success story. Because their other quote unquote success stories on um, Love and Marriage DC, Joy and Clifton. I'm not even going to go into them right now. So, um, yeah. So, Z, um, she, God, her face, that makeup, girl, whatever shade of makeup you wear, whatever brand of makeup you wear don't ever wear it again so she was having a conversation with demario and i don't think demario was feeling her i don't think demario was feeling her at all because 
Z is pretty, but their makeup is bad. <laughs> so we find out a little bit about uh, Demario. So Demario, his sister, she passed away of breast cancer and his nephew is here in Dallas being raised by his sister and he's very family oriented. Now, did, I do believe he said his parents are divorced, right? He asked her, can she be with an alpha man? She said yes, but she asked him, can he handle an alpha female? I'm going to give you an answer, the, the long and short answer to that one. Absolutely not. I don't think he can. So, back over to Blake, you guys. Remember, Blake has three kids. 22, 14, 9. Now, the fact that he's talking about he don't want to start over when he's, he's, he's planning for retirement and he don't want to have to, you know, um, talk about a college fund. I'm like, sir, you already got to talk about one with a 9-year-old and a 14-year-old. So, what the, there's a, a newborn I mean, shit, you, if you have a baby now, the baby would be nine years younger than your, than your, than your, um, than your nine-year-old. So you're still in the same boat. <laughs> you're still in the same, you're still in the same situation. So they asked him, you know, how certain is he that he, you know, doesn't want kids. He said about 87% sure. I was like, that's a very random number. But you told Natasha, you don't want any kids, right? Now, here's where Blake lost me. When he talking about he feels like if a woman is raising a chi her child by herself, that that's a broken home. Excuse you, Mr. Three Sons with three different women. You don't think that those are three different broken homes that you created? You created them. You created them. So Tommy talked to the men and the women, asked them who they feeling, who they not feeling. You guys know I don't really go too deep into that. So I'm going to tell you guys who went home. Broke man Tommy Davidson, a.k.a. Dre and Natasha. That was it. Now, the bottom two came down to Dre and Blake. I wasn't surprised that Blake didn't go home. And then with the women, it was Natasha and Z. I was slightly surprised that Z didn't go home. I was shocked as hell. I was like, y'all keeping Z? But okay, they keeping Z. That's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this first episode of Rated to Love in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on, and share the video, you guys. And until the next time, you guys, please stay safe, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, be blessed, and I will catch you guys in the next one.